Hello, welcome. Now, finally, it's possible to play two Dragon Ball games on Yuzu Android. Dragon Ball Fighter Z, which requires a hack to avoid crashes. And another game that ran on some devices and not on others, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. The latter received a fix from the emulator, preventing it from crashing. There are still some minor graphical issues, but overall, the game is playable, and that's what we'll discuss in today's video. This video is offered by the members and Patreons of the channel. Thank you for your support. Firstly, let's address Dragon Ball Fighter Z. It was rarely possible to complete a battle on Yuzu as the game would simply close. However, now, using the hack created by the community, it's possible to play multiple battles in a row and even the story mode without major issues. The hack and the game update will be in the video description. Without this update, the hack won't work. To install the mod correctly, long press on your game, go to Manage Mods, Updates, and DLCs, click Install, Mods, and Cheats, and navigate to the Mod folder until you find the Cheats folder. Then click Use this folder. My game was in version 1.27, but to work correctly, you need version 1.33, and the update is included with the mod. I must emphasize that after this fix, it's a matter of time before a PR is created, and the Yuzu development team adds this fix to the app's code to make it work without the mod. During 3v3 fights, there are still small graphical issues during dust effects, and in some cases, the life bar isn't updated as the character takes damage. However, overall, there are no more issues when compiling new shaders, and for those who tried to play this game on older versions of this emulator, there was a massive compilation of shaders when a new player entered the battlefield or when they performed special moves. In my case, I was able to run it in both handheld and TV modes. However, I preferred to use handheld mode for greater FPS stability. Moving on to story mode, all the scenery, characters, and effects are rendered correctly. There is no delay or small graphical issue during the story presentation. The only downside here is the low texture quality that the Switch version presents for the ground and other objects. Story mode battles also occur normally. There were no crashes during the loading of another scene or battlefields. Everything worked as expected. The default settings were used, with only disc shader cache and asynchronous shaders activated for better performance and fewer stutters. The settings used will be available in the description. And if you enjoy this type of video, which provides information on when the most anticipated games become available for you to play on your device, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if this is your first time here. In Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, it was already possible to run the game on other devices, but on some, like my ROG Phone 6, the game simply wouldn't start. The tip for those who want to play this game is to set the GPU accuracy to high, this will solve most problems. However, for some users, they only manage to run the game after changing Fastmum. Some report that Fastmum needs to be turned off. I recommend trying both options. My experience running the game with all DLCs and the latest update was simply sensational. Despite some graphical issues with particles and lighting, it's possible to run the game at a constant 30 FPS. In story mode, cutscenes and environments are rendered correctly. However, one thing I noticed is that sometimes when changing areas, the game may simply freeze during loading, resulting in the so-called infinite loading. Remember that to receive this new update, just update your app through GitHub. Now you don't need to uninstall the app as before, just download and update your previous one. And that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time.